Hello class, today we will be covering what a hypothesis is and how it is related to understanding the p-value, as well as a null hypothesis and committing a type 1 or type 2 error. Kick back and relax, by Juan Sierra. A hypothesis is a statement that describes or explains a relationship between or among variables. But keep in mind though, it is not a final answer, but rather a proposal to be tested and evaluated. In a more layman's manner, we can say that a hypothesis is derived from either our own experiences or information gathered from previous literature. Basically, we can consider a hypothesis as an educated guess on what may happen or occur depending on your research ideas. When talking about a hypothesis, there are usually two main forms, a hypothesis statement and a research question. They are essentially the same, but phrased differently. Hypothesis statement is a predictive statement about the relationship between two or more variables. Here's a quick example. The new treatment A will lower self-stigma in personal disability and encourage independence as well as vocational aspirations as compared to treatment as usual. In research, we see a hypothesis as both a statement and in forms of a question as well. It would be good to keep in mind that some literature displays both a hypothesis statement and question or at times one versus the other. Either is okay. A, a hypothesis as a statement is exactly that, a statement, specifically regarding what your research is based on and or what you are expecting to find. On the other hand, we have research questions. Research questions essentially are in question format and are the same as a statement hypothesis. There are three basic hypotheses questions. Difference, associational, and descriptive research questions. We will go more into them shortly. As mentioned earlier, we can divide research questions into three different types. With difference research questions, we compare groups or levels derived from the independent variable in terms of their scores on the dependent variable. These are usually used with randomized experimental, quasi-experimental, and comparative approaches, which test for differences, usually with ANOVAs. With associational research questions, we usually consist of one independent and one dependent variable. Associational inferential statistics test for associations or relationships, also known as correlations. And finally, with descriptive research questions, we usually are dealing with only one variable. Moving on, now what is a p-value you might ask? A p-value indicates a probability that the outcomes could happen, usually about 5%. So the p-value measures if your hypothesis is statistically significant or not assuming a true null, true null hypothesis. More on the null hypothesis shortly, but keep in mind a p-value does not indicate the strength of the relationship. This would be a whole new subject all on its own. A p-value is significant if it is less than 0 0.05, preferably. A null hypothesis. This is a statement about the original hypothesis being examined, but the null always says that there is either no effect, no change, or no relationship between the variables in regard to your research. Using our previous example, our null hypothesis could sound something like, for example, the new treatment A will equal or have no effect on a person's sense of self-stigma towards their disability as compared to treatment as usual. This is where things get a little tricky. Since a hypothesis is an inferential process using limited information to reach a general conclusion about your population in question, there is always a possibility that a researcher may be committing a type 1 or type 2 error. A type 1 occurs when a researcher finds evidence for a significant result when in fact there is no significant effect. For example, saying that treatment A does actually benefit and help those with a disability but in fact, treatment A has no effect versus treatment as usual. The next error is type 2. This occurs when sample data do not show evidence of a significant effect, but there in fact is a significant effect on the population. For example, saying something like, the new treatment A does not elicit an effect, when in fact treatment A does actually produce effects to the population. Essentially, there is a lot more going on with a hypothesis than what many of us have learned in the third grade when being taught about the scientific method. 
to summarize, a hypothesis is either in a statement format or in the form of a question. Data results should provide a p-value lower than 0.05 to be considered significant. And lastly, despite our results, we can still commit a type 1 or a type 2 errors. All in all, thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. You have a wonderful day.